Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Michael. You're watching IDB. It's great to have you here. In this video, I want to show you some underrated features in iOS 18. So there are some features in this update that aren't really getting the spotlight, but these features are still going to make a big impact to how you use your iPhone every single day. Let's go ahead, roll the intro and jump right in. So first up is inside of messages, and I think you guys are really going to like this. So the first one is we have a pretty small change for when you're tapping back a message. First up is the UI is a bit more colorful now. I think this looks a lot better than iOS 17. But on top of this, you can also tap back with any emoji as you can see here. So I can choose any emoji to send and it does require both iPhones to be on iOS 18 obviously. If you click on the button below right here, you can choose any emoji on your phone and this just makes uh, iMessages a bit more uh, expressive and fun. Uh, you can tap back with any emoticon. Another really cool feature inside of iMessage I think you guys are really gonna like is what is called text effects. Now you can choose any text effect for any message and sometimes the system is actually gonna recommend a text effect for you. So if I just type out hello and then I double click on the text, then I swipe over here, you can see we have a new option that says text effects. I do wish that this was easier to get to but it lives right here. And as you can see here, we have a bunch of different ways we can send our message. So if I choose this one and click on send, you can see that the text is animating just like that in the thread. I'll now show you how it works automatically. Now, I don't know all of the phrases it works with, and I do believe that the phone is analyzing your conversation to choose the best effect for you, depending on what words you send. But I do know whenever I type woo like this, you can see it recommends this text effect like this. If I click on it, I can go ahead and send it just like that. So I think this is gonna make texting a lot more fun in iOS 18. And the next feature in iMessage that I think you guys are gonna love is called Send Later. You can see here I have a text scheduled to be sent tomorrow at 8 a.m. So I'll show you how I did that. You wanna type out your message, then press on the plus, then scroll down and then click on Send Later. And from here, you're able to choose exactly what date and time you wanna send that text at. So I can imagine this is gonna be very, very useful for people that forget birthdays a lot. They can now actually schedule the happy birthday text so you never miss another birthday for a friend. And another feature that I am so glad is finally on the iPhone is RCS messaging. So this is pretty much a rich communication texting and it is so much better than SMS. It is pretty much on par with iMessage and I'll show you exactly what it looks like. So here I just have an RCS thread with one of my friends who does not have an iPhone, but as you can see, I get a red receipt and when he's typing, I get a typing indicator and whenever I send a photo or a video, it's gonna be in much higher quality. So overall, RCS is so much better than normal SMS and pretty much every modern Android phone supports it. So now whenever you're texting your friends that have these green bubbles, the communication is going to be a lot better than the normal outdated SMS. But the final feature I wanna show you, I'm not able to show you in this current situation, so I do have a YouTube video pulled up, and it is messages via satellite. So if you are out of service, you're gonna see something that looks like this, and it allows your iPhone to connect to a satellite in order to send that text message or that iMessage. This is eventually going to be a paid service down the road. I believe Apple says that you get uh, satellite services free for two years when you buy an iPhone. But if Apple is launching satellites into space, you are eventually gonna have to pay for it. But some of these features are really cool. And over the years, I love seeing how much Apple has expanded all of their satellite services. So all those features inside of messages were just number one. Number two is what is called the controls API. I don't think this is getting enough attention because this really is a huge update for iOS 18. The new controls API is going to allow developers access to control center. So you'd be able to go into control center, go into edit mode, click on add a control, and you can have any control here from any third party application. The example I keep giving is if you have a Tesla, you could go into control center and instantly open your trunk or start your air conditioning. Really the possibilities are endless. And this controls API also extends to the lock screen as well. So with iOS 18, you're able to replace these controls, but with the new API, you'd be able to replace these controls with any third party control as well. So it's gonna be really powerful in iOS 18 with these controls right on the lock screen, you're able to do any action inside of any third party application once that app gets updated for iOS 18. Next at number three is math. The iPhone now supports math everywhere throughout the system. And a lot of people think this might be boring, but it actually is going to be very, very handy. And when I say everywhere, I do mean everywhere that you can type text. So I'll just go into messages for this example. If I go 25, 
times 45, as soon as I click on equals, you can see the system is going to recommend an answer right there. And like I said, this works everywhere throughout the system. We can also go one step deeper and use this inside of notes and get a bit more advanced. So here, I just made a, uh, an example note here for a fake trip and I put all of the costs of everything. You can see I have labeled everything and put a cost next to it. And at the bottom, I have put all of the words with a plus sign in between them. If I go here to the end of the equation and then click on equals, you can see it actually gives me a cost of everything I put up here. So this is going to be very, very handy if you're doing budgeting or planning for any trip or any excursion you want in the notes app. This is going to be very, very handy as the system is now able to handle uh, pretty much any equation you throw at it. Next up at number four is we have a bunch of really great updates to stock applications throughout the system. So the ones I wanna show you are calendar, calculator, and notes. Let's go ahead and start with calendar. So first up is we have a redesigned month view with a really cool option to now pinch into our days. And as you can see, it expands really fluidly and it looks really cool. And also at the same time as I'm doing this, I'm also getting haptic feedback on my iPhone. So you can pretty much choose any size that you want for your calendar view. And this makes it a lot easier to see an overview of your month and then quickly pinch in and see more detail. And then the calendar application also has support for reminders as well. And every reminder that you have inside of calendar is going to be syncing up perfectly with your reminders application. To have a new reminder, you can either have it in the original application or you can add a new reminder right from calendar. It looks like this right at the top. And then once you have a reminder in your calendar, you can simply check it off right from your timeline just like that. And the next application update I wanna show you is the calculator. And there is one really cool feature I wanna show you and that is called Math Notes. So if you click on the calculator icon on the bottom left corner, you can see we can switch to our Math Notes option. And this allows us to pretty much sketch out our math. This is a lot better on the iPad if you have an Apple Pencil. However, it still does work great on the iPhone. So I'm just gonna go into a drawing mode like this and I'll rotate my iPhone into a horizontal mode because it's easier. And then if I just go, five times five. As soon as I draw an equal sign, you can see even though my handwriting is horrible, it is still going to input that answer right there. So this feature is going to work with much more advanced equations. Obviously it doesn't just work with multiplication, but you can have some very, very advanced math in here and the iPhone is going to do a very good job using AI to solve it. And I also wanna mention that when you're in the calculator and you go to math notes, this is a whole new section where you can have all of your math notes saved. So if you are a student, this is going to be fantastic. It's gonna sync with iCloud and it's pretty much like having an extension of the notes app, but just for math equations. And then the final app update I wanna show you is notes. So on top of all the math that you can do inside of notes, we also have some really cool new formatting options. The first one is we're simply able to add color to our text now. So if I go ahead and select this text, I can click right here, and then you can see I have an option to add color. If I click right here, let's say I'm gonna make this orange, and then as you can see here, I've made that text orange like that. Also, we have the option in notes now for collapsible headers, which is going to be really great if you have a really large note. All you have to do is click on each header, and then you'll see that we have a little arrow. And if I click like this, you can see it's gonna hide each heading just like that. You can imagine just how useful this would be if you have a giant note with a lot of info to reveal what is under each heading. All you have to do is click the down arrow and then you can hide it once again, just like that. And then the final new feature inside of notes is audio. Now it took me a while to find where audio was hiding because honestly, I don't think it's very intuitive, but if you click on this paperclip icon, you can see we have a new option that says record audio. You have the option to record audio and put it right into your note. Now, for some reason, it doesn't work on my iPhone, maybe because of my region or maybe because it's in beta, but there should be a transcription button at the bottom left-hand corner, which is going to transcribe your text uh, as you are speaking, and then it can put it into text inside of your note. So let me know on your iPhone if you have the beta installed, if this is working for you, but in the future, you should be able to have live transcription notes right on your iPhone. So now for number five, it is the little things. Everybody loves the little things. It's the small tweaks and changes and updates that really make the iPhone feel like it's getting a little bit more fresh year over year. The first little update is the new flashlight toggle. 
This thing is completely unnecessary, but it is kind of cool. When you turn on your flashlight, you can see you get a gigantic UI pop out of the dynamic island on your iPhone, but it actually is functional because you're able to change not only the intensity of the flashlight, but also the width of your flashlight beam. You can see here, I can make it very narrow. I can also make it spread a bit more wide and I can bring the intensity up and down if I want to. I have no idea who is going to use this, but it is a cool feature nonetheless. Another little update I love in iOS 18 is the new dynamic wallpaper. If you go here and press and hold and then click on customize, then choose lock screen, you can see we're able to choose our dynamic iOS 18 wallpaper. If I swipe between styles, you can see we can actually choose a color, but here at the very start, you can see dynamic. And this wallpaper is gonna change throughout the day depending uh, on the conditions outside. And also another little update I love in iOS 18 is if you wanna turn off your iPhone, you no longer have to use the buttons. You can simply go into control center and there's a new power button right there. So the final underrated feature I wanna show you in iOS 18 is inside of the new passwords application. If you click on your Wi-Fi, you can choose your current Wi-Fi network and you're actually able to make a QR code for your Wi-Fi network. If I click on mine right here, you can see I can show network QR code. And then if I want, I can take a screenshot of this and then print it out. And this way, whenever someone comes over to my house, all they have to do is scan this QR code to connect to my Wi-Fi. As you've been able to tell throughout the entire video, iOS 18 is packed full of really great features that really make this feel like a huge update to the iPhone. I want you to head down to the comments and share with me anything that you are loving in iOS 18. Also, if there's any underrated features that I missed, also let me know in the comments down below. If you guys found this video informative or helpful or entertaining, please drop a like as it does help us out quite a bit. With all that said, my name is Michael with IDB. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.